it's hard to get to the good without going through some of the quote unquote, what may, may seem at first to be bad. Uh, and that is, you, you can't right out of the gate make demands that you want to, that you want, uh, well, I'm not going to do this or work for you or be on your roster if, if I'm not guaranteed $300,000 a year right out of the gate. Or I'm going to, I want to change, I want to negotiate the split or I want to negotiate fee schedules. I, you know, you said these guys are T W2, but I want 1099. A person, a new person in particular, I mean, in general, it's, you can't really change those things, right? For the most right. part. Right. And a new person that doesn't have a leg to stand on, they got to go through Yes, whatever you got, give it to me, and then earn the ability to be able to say, after a long season, four, five, six, seven months of working claims, hey, listen, I'm gonna need a break. Um, so, and when you get called for that free storm, right? Um, I'm gonna have to sit this one out, um, but I'll call you, give me 45 days, and I'll call you guys back and make, and make myself available again, and then you're back off again, because you're gonna need a break. This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. This video is sponsored by Hague Education. Use code ADJUSTERTV to get a 15% discount on damage assessment, CE training, industry certifications, books, and tools at HagueEducation.com. The bad part of this, really, and it kind of goes back to the entrepreneurial piece, um, entrepreneurs that are successful are the ones that are ju they just show up every single day. And you, have, you really have to show up every single day, especially with doing catastrophe work in particular. Um, so you're gonna, you're gonna get tired, you're gonna get burned out. My, the, the way I kind of looked at it when I was on Storm, and I've been on Storm for months, I started to feel like, you know that movie Groundhog Day? Um, I feel like uh, Dan Aykroyd reaching over and slapping the, the alarm, and it's just the same day over and over and over again. And that's when I knew, I was like, okay, at the end of this one, I'm gonna have to take a little break, a little breather. Yeah, you're, you're gonna get the, the burnout for sure. To, to go back and kind of chat or explain the the thought on like a, what a new adjuster who says, well, I you know my uncle works for sixty five percent, I'm going to accept sixty five percent. What what they're not understanding is that their uncle that makes sixty five percent, it's very unlikely that they need a lot of management support. If yeah. you are new, you're going to need management support, and you're going to want that management support. You're going to want to get better at your job, right? You get what you put into it. The management's going to help you. Your trainers, those types. Those things are going to happen for you, but that costs money to back to, to the vendor. So we have to sure. support we have to support you. We have the duty to support you. In order to do that, we have to pay people to do that. We have to pay experienced talent to do that, trainers and managers and file reviewers or whomever it may be, a host of support that we have out there for our adjusters, but that costs money. So until you can get to the point in which you are less reliant on that support staff. Yeah, your commissions are going to be lower. Oh, in, yeah, in for most, sure. In most cases. But before yeah. we move too far into the bad, I, I, I can't um, stress this enough when we're still talking about the good. One of the best parts about adjusting and one of the reasons I'm still in this, this career field is helping people. And yeah. if you have the knack to help people in their time of their most distressed time, I mean, homeowner claims, for example, this is your largest asset very likely the largest asset you're ever going to buy is your home. And when you are able to help individuals and families during their time of crisis, that just feels really good. And so I don't want to understate that enough. Sure, it's entrepreneurial. Sure, it's flexible. Sure, you can make a lot of money. But at the end of the day, you're helping people and you're making a really positive impact on people's lives. And I that's that's one of the things that just gives me goosebumps. Yeah, for sure. And I will even, I'll add on top of that, that it's, you're almost, when you walk into a, uh, any kind of claim, water spot on the ceiling, right? I mean, or, tree leaned over and smushed up the gutter a little bit, and that's really all the damage that there is. People, uh, adjusters, I mean, this is why I don't believe in triage, necessarily, um, at least tradi the traditional way everybody talks about doing it. And that is, is that having a claim is stressful, right? That is a stressor that's added on to all the other stressors that a homeowner, a person just in their just day-to-day -day life has, right? All the things that go on, um, I'm gonna be late for this meeting, I've got to, you know, I forgot to pick up this at the grocery store, um, just found out that my mother-in-law has terminal cancer, right? And this, I, I say like dramatic, drastic things like that, because those are things that happen every day to people, right? And then, and then the storm blows through in the middle of the night and they got a leak in the kitchen and they see a water spot over the sink and they're like, oh, you know, then that just amplifies that stress level. 
because they're thinking, I, I, don't, I'm, I don't climb on my roof, I don't know anything about construction at all. Does this mean I need a brand new roof? We just had that thing replaced last year, what do I do? And then the very next thought that they have is, oh, now I gotta call my insurance company, I gotta deal with them, yeah. right? So the, yeah. it's the stresses, they pile and they pile and they pile, and usually, a lot of the time, it's more than most people can kind of like have their arms around, right? So you, an adjuster is walking into that. And if an adjuster can have the mindset again, I think, you know, we, we talk about serving the industry, let's talk about serving the customer, right? No matter what, when I walk into that situation, the homeowners, I mean, my hair is going back because he's yelling so much because he's so upset. Maybe the guy threw his back out, right? I threw my back out last weekend, like this is a true story, and I was laid up for two days. And I, I think I just leaned over to pick up a cup of coffee and I was like, oh, right? I don't know why that happens. So, and yeah, getting up off the couch, it hurts, right? And it, yeah, right, exactly. Uh, so when somebody has chronic pain, right, from something like that, or they, you know, they broke their leg, or they, they, they tore their ACL and they're recovering from that, whatever it is, right, it could be anything, that makes people kind of grumpy to begin with. Yeah. Adjusters have to have thick skin, right, and you have to recognize, okay, anything could be going on in this person's life. I'm just going to be here to, you know, to kind of be like little Bruce Lee, little Neo in the Matrix and let the bullets kind of just go by me and keep my same face and just be like, let's, let's figure out what we can do about this. I want to make sure I do a full inspection and do the full customer service thing, right? Um, because that, that piece right there for me was like, okay, it's challenging enough to walk into a total loss fire. Right, and the homeowner, there's a big tear stain on your shoulder because they, they're crying because you just gave an advance on their contents or their ALE or whatever it is, and you just hand them a check, right? And they, they're bawling because they're, they're so grateful. That's, that's almost easier, relatively speaking, than walking into a situation where the homeowner's got chronic pain, they just found out they lost their job, they just all these things piled on one time, and then the claim happened, and now here's the adjuster, right? And you're getting a full barrage right in the face of it. To me, that was, you know, those are all extremely challenging situations, which is why I would always treat the water spot on the ceiling with the same deference, the same sort of bedside manner, the sort of same attitude towards the insured as the total loss wildfire, where the homeowners were, were clothes on their back, racing away from trees on fire, falling on down right behind their car as they're driving away. Those are the same to me as the adjuster. And that always really served me really well and got me, I worked at a, a major carrier for a year and got noticed by the honchos because I had 100s on my CWPs for like a month. And they were like, how are you doing that? And I'm like, what do you mean, how am I doing that? It's, why isn't everybody doing what I'm doing, right? So that was, not only is that rewarding, but it's a, it's a challenge. It's hard to do, right? Until you start to build up those reps as an adjuster. If you wanna watch the rest of this episode where I answer other questions ad free, as well as get access to a members only segment question and answer, head on over to adjustertvplus.com and become a member right now.